Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial number 16 of the Lost in the Sea series. Today we are going to create a very simple walking cycle for the octopus we created and rigged in the last tutorials. You can find out more about the modulation and the rigging process in the description. And after creating the walking cycle we are going to import it to Unity and see how we can play animations in Unity. So basically there are two rules that I like to follow when animating. One is the traditional way to animate from big to small and this basically means animating obvious movements and big movements then going to details and small things. Two, when I am animating I like to do things a bit slower because we see more details and have a better control and then if we want to make it faster we can always do it. Okay, so in a walking cycle the character doesn't really move forward or backwards, we animate it in the same position and then in Unity or in Blender we make it move forward or backwards. So let's get started by opening the dope sheet and select Action Editor. Press the new button and call it Octopus Walking Cycle. Now what we want to do is start with macro movements like I said in the beginning and one of those obvious movements is the head leaning backwards and forwards when he wants to move. And we want to control that movement with this bone. Most of the times when animating a bone we want to start by inserting a keyframe in the frame number 0. We can insert keyframes by pressing I. As you can see there are several options like only location, rotation or scale. Most of the times I lock everything, like location, rotation and scale, but since we are only dealing with location movements, you can simply select lock location. We go to the frame 100 and push the head back like this and press I to insert a keyframe in the location. Now if we press Alt A, we can play the animation and basically start to see the octopus making an effort to move forward. If you want to change the amount of frames the walking cycle has, you can simply drag another window from here and select timeline and now change the end to whatever you want. I recommend you to control your animations in the graph editor. You can have an easier understanding of what's going on Understand if the bones have a smooth movement or an abrupt motion and this will help you to make better animations. We can zoom in in the graph editor with the mouse wheel and since I look at the location, rotation and scale now the respective lines appear here and we can hide the rotation lines and scale ones by pressing this I. As you can see the endless will allow us to control the shape of the curve. Now Blender also has some interpolation presets and we can access them by pressing T and if you play around you can see what each one does. This may be really useful. So now we duplicate with Shift T the first keyframe and put them in the end of our animation. Why we do this? Because we want this to be a loop and we want the start and the end of our animation to be equal. Now let's keyframe the neck bone because the octopus also moves that part of his body in an effort to move forward. Let's keyframe in a zero and around the frame 70 move the neck just a bit forward and add a keyframe in the location with I. Also duplicate the first frame to the end of the loop. And now we also want to move these frames a bit nearer to the end so it really looks like he's making an effort to go forward. Something like this will do the job. And even more if you want. Now that we have the movement of the head done, let's move on to the tentacles. And a good thing about this is that it can be a bit random, a bit aleatory. But the idea of the tentacles is that when the head goes back, the tentacles have to go forward so he can have strength enough to move his body in front. But not every tentacle does this. Some of them don't go forward, they just kinda do another contraction. But let's see how this works. So select this tentacle and set the keyframe in zero and around here let's move it forward to something like this. And keyframe the location. If we press Alt A we can see the result. 
Now, like we did before, duplicate with shift D the first keyframe to the end. And let's do again the same process for this tentacle. Keyframe the location in 0. And around the frame 80, just move it to somewhere like this. And keyframe the location. And finally duplicate the first frame to the end of the animation. Now let's go back to our first tentacle. And the trick around here is to pick these antlers and move them like this. And this means that it will slowly move the tentacle forward, but then it moves a bit quicker when it go backwards. And that will give the sensation of effort. For this tentacle in the back, we are going to create small contraction and make it look like it's also using the tentacle to move forward. Create a keyframe in a zero and in the frame 80, we can move it to a position where it will contract a little bit and keyframe it. We just need to duplicate the first key to the end and maybe do the same thing we did with the Bezier curves in the last tentacle. And now we are closer to get an overall feeling of what is going on. We just need to move the we just need to do the same thing for this tentacle and move these keyframes to the number 100. For this bone, repeat the same process by inserting a keyframe in the frame 0 and the main difference is that I make sure that the tentacle doesn't go too much down by controlling this bone here. After controlling the height of this bone, we can keyframe it to the frame 100 around this position. Duplicate the first frame like we used to do to the hand. And you basically have to do a similar process for any tentacle that's left. For the eyes, we make a simple movement like this. The octopus will basically look a little bit to the side, since he doesn't look only forward. And you can also make his eyes close a little bit like this, and that's it for the eyes. Now, as you may have noticed, if your animation is something between 160 frames or even 200 frames, it's a bit repetitive, it's a bit small, and we can easily break that repetitiveness by duplicating the amount of frames in the timeline, making our walking cycle twice as long. And now we only need to select every bone, Duplicate all the frames and make sure the last is equal to the first like we did before, so we can have a nice loop. And this basically means that we can create some difference in our second movement and it will certainly look more unique and less repetitive. There is only one more thing that I recommend you to do, if you haven't done it yet, for the head of the octopus. When he moves back, make sure to create a little tilt to the left or to the right, like this. And do the same thing when you move his head to the front. And this will create more credibility. And this is it guys, we have created a walking cycle for the octopus. And this means in the next tutorial, we will see how to import animations to Unity. And then, make sure to import the rest of the Lost in the Seed scenario that we created. And thank you for watching guys, subscribe for weekly updates on game development related topics and see you in the next tutorials.